Today I'm going to show you guys how to make my version of a Flemish twist bowstring. First thing you're going to want to do is take your bow, measure knock to knock, and you want to get that distance. So I'm just using this bow as an example. The actual uh, bow that I'm going to make this string for doesn't exist yet. And normally I make the bow first, but one of you guys kind of requested uh, a string video and the next bow I have planned is gonna be 68 inches, knock to knock. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is take that knock to knock distance and you're gonna knock off four inches of that. So you're at 64 inches now. And now take that 64 inches and you wanna add 20 extra inches to that. So then you're at 84 inches. So 84 inches is the full length of the strands that we're gonna make in order to make a string for a 68 inch bow. The string that I'm using is Dynaflight. I've used Dynaflight for the majority of the time. I've also tried Fastflight. There's not that much of a noticeable difference from one to the other. Fastflight is just a little more rigid, so when you shoot the bow, it doesn't stretch as much, so it tends to lean a little more towards speed, but a little more towards more fragile bows. So I normally stick with Dynaflight. As you can see, this roll is almost done. It was about this big. Uh, a couple years ago. To get this started, you're just gonna wanna wrap the string around itself. Make sure you go over it a couple of times. That should do, that'll hold. Now just walk down and back four times. So you're gonna have eight single strands. Okay, so there's eight. Whenever you get done, just wrap it around a couple more times and then it'll stay there. And then you just take a pocket knife or whatever and cut that. So these are already kind of pre-coated with some beeswax. But as you're pulling and kind of lining these, these eight strands up, kind of sync them up as you're going. So do like 10 inches and then pull back. And now these are kind of synced and keep doing that all the way up. Just make sure it's real grouped together. The more heat that you can generate when you're doing this, it'll take some of that waxy coating that's on the outside of the string and kind of bind those together. Okay, for the time being, leave those eight strands separate and then start a new wrap. So we're gonna do eight more. Man, we barely had enough. Look at that, awesome. All right, same thing on this one. So we've got eight strands here isolated and eight strands here. So after you have these lined up uh, parallel to each other, take the two ends and then you're gonna wanna measure 15 inches from that end up here. Start your twisting down here. So 15 inches is right there. So that's where I'm gonna pinch those two. I'm pinching both of these. So all 16 strands right here. And now I have 15 inches. You're gonna go to one of the eight strands and you pinch it with your thumb and index finger, and you're gonna pinch and twist away from you. With your pointer finger, you're gonna grab the other strand and twist back, and then you just kind of pinch over what you just did. So I'm gonna do it a couple more times. So pinch between thumb and index finger, right hand, rotate, grab with your pointer finger, rotate back. So every time you do that, it adds a little twist. So you just pinch, rotate, grab index finger, rotate back. Every time you add a new one, cover it up with your left hand. So pinch, rotate, go back. Pinch, rotate, grab, go back. Pinch, rotate, grab, go back. Pinch, rotate, grab, go back. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep doing this until we got a little bit of uh, working room. And now you will, this does become like muscle memory, so you can end up doing this quite quickly. Um, it really doesn't take long to make a string. So you can see already, just from even doing it in like tutorial mode, we already have about two, two and a half inches of this Flemish twist. We measured 15 inches from the end to where we started our twist. Now, how long do you keep the twist going? I would go up six inches, because we're gonna want it to have Flemish twist just bare for four inches, so it's gonna go up to about there. And then those extra two inches are gonna be here, and we're actually gonna use that to make the loop. So these two inches here are gonna fold back over and make a loop. So right here I have six inches of Flemish twist going on. 
we're gonna come down to the four inch mark, which is right here, and that's where our six inch is gonna come wrap around, make a loop, and tie into the four inch. So I'm gonna pinch it right up where that four inch mark is, and I'm gonna know that that six inch needs to wrap back around to make our loop like that. Now, depending on the size of your limb tips, that is gonna determine the size of the loop that you need. This is a very standard size. It's so normally, you just do two inches total length and then make a curve and that'll be a really great size. Now I'm sure you're wondering, okay, that's great. We looped it around, but how are we gonna attach it? So I do this part a little bit different than most people. So what I want you to do is just kind of open this, open this up like so. So that's our four inch marker. So we still have four inches of Flemish twist below that right here. So I wanna open this up and have that connect right here. So how do you do that? Open up your Flemish twist four inches up. And now you're gonna, this, the end of this has two strings coming off. One of them, you're gonna take the end and put it through the front of your hole. Like so. Now the other one, you're gonna put it through the back and walk it through the front. Now, if you don't have super clean ends, sometimes it's easier to just kind of force the whole thing through and just double it up and grab it, kind of how I just did. So that's the start, right? We got one going in the front, one going in the back. Now you just go down uh, one more twist and you're gonna open up the next one. So you open up the next one down and whichever one went, you see how this string on the last one went through this side and out the back. So this string on the next one has to go through the back and out the front. Okay, that's gonna really help lock it in. Now, if you look at this one, we already have one going through the back and coming out the front. And this one needs to go through the front and go out the back. So you're just gonna repeat this process until you've walked down the entire length of your Flemish twist. All of this kind of tag end part, we wanna run through the rest of the Flemish twist that we have. So the more of those you can run through, the better. But also it gets to a point where it's just kind of wasted energy because you already have enough friction so that uh, knock loop is not gonna come undone. Okay, so we'll do a couple more just for example's sake. So we still have this amount of twist we gotta get through, and we still have quite a bit of tag end to work with, and that's great. It sucks when you have too little. It means that you did your measurements wrong. But you don't wanna open that one because that's the same as the loop it just came out of. So open the next one down. I like to open it real wide. It just makes it a little easier for the next part. And then I can see this one is coming out of the front, so it needs to go through the front to the back, just like so. And I like to apply a little bit of twist to these as I do them, because it keeps everything just kind of unified and makes it easier. Now this one went out the back last time, so it needs to go through the back out the front this time. Just kind of pass it through. And now after those are through, how do you make it pretty? Uh, you just kind of retwist it real quick and then pull and pull. You see how nice that looks? So open up your next one, make it bigger, bigger is easier. Now this one goes through the front. So on the next one, it needs, or it comes out the front. So on this next one, it needs to go through the front, out the back. Now make sure you're alternating these, like front, back, back, front, front, back, you know? Okay, and then how do we cinch it up and make it pretty? You just retwist the bottom, you pull on one tag, you pull on the other tag. It's real simple. Now open your next one, okay? Bigger loop makes it easier. This one comes through the front on the last one, so it has to go into the front on this one. Now out the back. Apply a little bit of twist to unify. 
Now this one came out the back, so it needs to go through the back and out the front on this next one. Now, how do we pretty these up? Just kind of twist, twist the base, pull one tag end, pull the other tag end. And you just continue that process and you end up with a really, really nice looking adjustable string. I'm gonna finish up the last remaining wraps and then we'll continue moving on to the next part. I got down to pretty much the bottom of the twist, but now what it looks like is from here to here, that doesn't look like four inches anymore. So I think a couple of them came undone as I was doing it. Just make sure you've got four to five inches of pure Flemish twist, not loop end included. So I'm just gonna do a couple more loops and just a reminder on how to do those. You're gonna twist away, you're gonna grab, you're gonna twist back towards you, you're gonna pinch, twist away, grab, twist back towards you, pinch, twist away, grab, twist back towards you, pinch. Okay? Four steps, super easy. And as you become more proficient, it all just kind of turns into one step. You just kind of do it. Okay. Now that looks like about four inches. We've got one loop tied in here, and then we've got the whole thing straightened out along our two by four, and we've got a tape measure running along the length of it. So we know that 64 inches is where we want our other knock loop to be, right? So we want it right there. So from 64, we're gonna go back six inches because for the same reasoning as we used on the other end, it took six inches, four inches of which were just Flemish twist, and the other two inches were used to make the loop, right? So from 64 inches, go back six inches. So that's gonna be 58. And I have this laid out right along there. So I know right here is where I'm gonna start my next Flemish twist. So you're just gonna pinch it, apply a little bit of tension, make sure that you have the right length. And now we're gonna start our twist the exact same way, working up this direction. So same, same exact method, twist, grab, twist back, pinch. I'm just gonna go until we have six inches. Okay, if you ever wanna check, I know that's 58. I'm up to, I got about an inch and a half left. It does not take long, guys. Let's see how we're doing. Okay, so I have a little more than six inches from the 58 inch mark. This line is where we started our Flemish twist on this side. We went up six inches, so from 58, we're gonna go to 64. So 64 is right there. So we know 64 inches is where we want our knock loop to be, right? It's where we want the end of the knock loop to be. So the knock loop actually needs to start at 63 and go to 65. So we have that two inches of extra space so that we can get that double over to get the loop. So from 63 is where you're actually gonna do your pinch and then you're gonna grab at 65, rotate back down and then just try to line it up So you see how that's you see how that's right at 64, and I would make it slightly shorter, just because uh, whenever you string this up, uh, it's going to stretch. So right there, 64, boom. So I'm gonna I know that this part of the main line is where I want my wraps back into the Flemish twist to start. So I'm just going to open up a loop just like we did on the other side. We're going to do the exact same process. We've got two strands, two tag ends kind of coming off here. One needs to go in through the front of our hole. So let me do that real quick. In through the front. And one needs to come from the back out through the front. So I'm going to do that with the other one. Okay, and now how do we make it pretty? You just twist the bottom just like so. You pull on one tag end, you pull on the other. It'll be nice and pretty. And now open up your next loop. Right there, the bigger you make these loops, the easier it is to pass through the tag ends. So one through the front and out the back, and the next through the back and out the front. And you can make sure that you've got the distance just right. Boom. I'm just shy of that 64 mark. So as I string it up and I I kind of stretch the string for the first couple times, it will elongate. For the rest of this Flemish twist that we have down here, I'm just gonna rerun these tag ends through it the same way we did on the other side. Just continue that process all the way down. At this point, I still have a lot of tag end. 
left over, but I have both of my loops intact and ready to go. So it's one, it's, it's a workable string right now. Okay, the next step is we gotta stretch this string out. So I normally just do that on my vise. Just pull one of the knock loops in there. Uh, you can put a pen or pencil, whatever, in the other side. Apply a little bit of tension. After you have it stretched out and you're sure that there's full integrity on the knock loops and the Flemish twist that you've done, I would trim the edges, cut off the tag ends, comes out clean. You can, if you wish, uh, burn these edges. So I'll show you how to do that. So if you wanna really clean this thing up, I would loop everything else away from the flame so you only have the tag end exposed. And just kind of burn that in. And it kind of poofs up, but then it won't pass back through there without you forcing it to, which is great. Okay, so as you can see, we got a fully functional string right now. All we have left to do is to put the serving on in the center. Okay, so normally, I would just put the bow in the vise upside down, strung, and that's how I apply string serving. That's normally how I do it. Uh, because I did not have a bow designed for this string, and I'm actually making the string ahead of the bow, which I've never done before, uh, purely at the request of one of you guys. If you've got the bow in here, it's gonna have that curve, so you'll have some working room. Uh, the only reason that I raised this up is so that I can pass the serving over and under and kind of pass it to myself. 64 inches long, knock to knock. So go 32 down, make a tick. Now keep in mind that a lot of people make bows, including myself, so that the arrow shelf is not directly in the center of the bow. So like with this bow, it just has a very, very standard handle. It's just a universal handle. So when I grip it, the middle of this bow is actually here, right there but my hand covers that, and where I shoot off of is actually about an inch and a half higher than that other point. So keep that in mind when you do your serving. Your center placement for your serving is not actually the center in between knock to knock, uh, depending on the type of bow you're shooting, but for me, it's not. I have to go inch and a half deviation one way or the other. So our midway is 32, right? But because of what I just showed you about the arrow shelf, I had to go down to 30 and a half to account. So this is actually where the arrow is gonna be shot from. So you want the center of where your arrow knock is gonna be on your string. You want an equal distance of serving high and low of that point. So for me, that's three inches high, three inches low. So my serving will go from here to here. So we gotta cover that a little bit. So how you're gonna get started, uh, the beginning, just take the tag end, of your serving, lay that even, and then just do a couple wraps around it. And when you do these wraps, if you have the spool coming off the bottom, or the, the line coming off the bottom, instead of the line coming off the top, it'll make your life a lot easier. So spool set so that the line is coming off the bottom. It's just, it's way easier to set constant tension that way. And then just do a wrap and just keep them right next to each other. You're just going over this line that you have coming out. And with my left hand, I'm also kind of holding the string to help uh, prohibit it from twisting. Because if you're putting a lot of tension on there that the line is gonna want to twist up. The rest of the process is pretty similar. Just the biggest tip again, uh, make sure that your wraps are real close together, that you're applying a sufficient amount of tension. And I would go over this tag end until you have an inch or two before you cut it, just to make sure that it's sufficiently held in there. And then besides that, it's just when the spool is on the far side away from you, make sure it's thread down. So your serving is down. It's not coming off the top up here. It's down here. That, that makes it way easier to apply constant tension. Okay, so at this point, we've got about an inch of that covered. So you could probably snip that. Now for the remainder of this distance, until you get uh, maybe an inch to an inch and a half towards the end where you wanna finish, you're just gonna repeat the same process and just do wraps all the way down.
If you want to cover a little bit more ground, what you can do is kind of do slightly spaced wraps like so. Maybe do four or five of them and then decrease the tension that you're applying to your spool just enough so that you can scoot those together. But it's a little bit faster that way. Okay guys, when you get to the end, so you can see we've got maybe an inch, three quarters of an inch until we're at the place where we want the serving to end. Cut off maybe two feet, two and a half feet. And then you're gonna do a loop downwards. So just normally we would do the wraps just the same way we pass them over. And even without the spool, you can still continue wraps if you wanted. What, you, what I want you to do is leave yourself two to three inches, hold between thumb and index finger with right hand. Now with your left hand, I just want you to grab with your first three fingers. Now you're gonna make a loop, but you're gonna go, so it comes from the back, you make a loop and you go over the top. So this one is coming from the back and this one is going over the top. Now what you're gonna do is make loops, but kind of reverse loops. As you're going back towards the left, you're gonna be making loops and passing over, over the back, under the front, over the back, under the front, over the back, under the front. And just do that until you have about 12 to 15 loops Just keep tension on this the whole time. And don't, don't space your wraps out too much because then when you go to unwrap, uh, it just won't work out very well. You'll have like overlap and it can get tangled and a bunch of crap you don't wanna deal with. Now, what I like to do is after I make my loops, I just push them all just a little bit. And now we still have this tag end sticking out, right? So this is a good way for you to measure. So if you bunch all of them together on the side, you could say, okay, that's the added serving length that I'm gonna get when I do these forward wraps. Because these forward wraps on this end are gonna unwrap these backwards wraps on this end. So these will all disappear the only purpose for these being here is so that we can tie this tag end underneath our final wraps. So if I'm looking straight down, I can see that I need a little bit more room of wraps to get to that final serving thickness or serving length that I want. So I'm just gonna do a couple more. Okay, and now you just group them all together. That's very, very close to the final uh, serving length if I add this length and that length together. It's almost the exact same as that to that. So now what you're gonna do is pass uh, the tag end to your left hand and kind of hold it over the top. And you're just gonna pinch it. So still maintain pressure on this, but pinch this tag end right up right up back towards the left side and just kind of overlap it on the serving. And now pass the loop to your right hand and then just start doing wraps the same way that you did. So just pass it and every time we're doing a wrap on this side, we're undoing a wrap on this side. I want you to keep an eye on that. So look, doing a wrap, undoing the one on the opposite side. Doing a wrap, undoing. Doing a wrap, undoing. So this is a very cool way uh, to cinch down your serving without having to do an actual knot. And then after I get a certain amount of distance, so I don't have to hold this anymore because it's already under 10 of these wraps right here. So this tag end, I know I'm, I'm just gonna cut that at the end, but this is probably 
Uh, one of the most efficient ways to do this, and it also comes out uh, pretty. And it's like, yeah, it's not all about it being pretty, right? But you do, you don't want it to look like shit. If your wraps start getting too close, just kind of unwrap them and push them back towards this side. That way you can finish up. Uh, you do not want to have any leftover wraps when you get done. You want that all this all this kind of messiness on the right to disappear. I'll show you a good way to do that. Okay, so now we just have a loop on the end and that's all we have. But we also have our little pull cord that's our tag end, which is now in my left hand. And now we're just gonna pull this down real tight. And you see how the loop getting smaller as I'm doing that? So just let it right to the end and then cinch it up real nice. Cinch, 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 boom. And then just cut that at the end and you're good to go. And if you ever wanna see if you did a decent job, just try to move it. Like, you see how that, there's like no give. Like it, I'm, I'm applying a pretty good amount of force too. Those coils are right next to each other. So at this point, uh, our string is complete. So we've got a uh, string loop to string loop. I ended up having to kind of jerry-rig this. Maybe you guys will like this. Um, normally the you have the bow before you make the string. So when you put the bow in your vise, it will automatically apply that stretching force and that makes it much easier to do the string serving. But in this case, I don't have the bow, because uh, like I said, I'm doing the, serve, or the string first per request of one of you guys. So I needed tension on here, and I also needed space to work. So you can just make a little jig if you just want to practice making uh, a string before you make a bow, see if you like it. Just get two by four, two by four, stack it on top, put a screw in the top on that end. Same thing on this end, but I wasn't able to get enough tension to actually do the serving with just putting this, the knock loop in on the screw. So I took one of the weights that I have, and I tied some paracord to it, and tied it to the end of the string. So it's just kind of a pulley, right? So that's applying the tension that allowed me to make this. All right, so we got a fully made string, 64 inches knock to knock. The center of the serving is matched up with the knocking point of our arrow. Uh, the way that I showed you, where you have two knock loops that are both kind of started and then tied in and woven through the actual Flemish twist part, that means that if you ever wanted to change the length of this loop or this loop, that's possible. The way a lot of people will show you how to make these, uh, one of the loops is fixed in shape and size. So you're limited to only one side being variable, which in the end comes down to how much of the Flemish wraps have you done on that one side. That's how I personally make the strings. I hope this helps you guys. And of course, always remember, live what you love.